Hi everybody. Um, this is a video showing what we've been dealing with at Glen Oaks Community College. Um, a beaver issue. We've had beavers that have been blocking a drain um, that drains a pond at the college for a few years. Actually, for a long time this has been happening and it's been controlled mainly by one important maintenance worker whose name was Fong. But Fong retired. And after Fong retired, um, the beaver came back and um, it wasn't noticed for quite a while. When it was noticed, this is the first image that I got from when we, uh, when we started working on this. It was noticed that the pond was high. And to give you an idea how high the pond is at this point, um, the pic that's a picture of me in the wetsuit, by the way. And I am standing on top of the beaver debris that is on top of the um, actual drain in this image. The next image is, this is after I'd been clearing it for a while, there's this uh, corrugated steel, the drain is right here underneath the corrugated steel, and then there's this steel pipe that comes up. And um, I remember in this image where I'm standing there, the pipe is right in front of me, but it's about four inches underwater. So that gives you an idea of how high the pond is. So why does this matter? Why do we care? If the pond's a little high, no big deal. Well, the problem is, um, this is um, a Google Map view of the college. Um, and this is the lily pond down here. And College Road runs between Glen Oaks Community College and then Sauger Lake Road over here. And, and here is the Nora Hagen house down here. So this pond is if it overflows it threatens College Road. The pond drains into Lake Templain which is up here. Um, the actual drain by the way is right about here and it there's a culvert that runs from that drain into this little bit of water that you can see this little bit of a stream running down into Lake Templain. So anyway that's the backstory and the reason that it's important that this pond doesn't get too high that we keep the beaver blockage under control and from here, um, you'll see video of video that I took during the process of clearing um, the drain to get the water level down to the drain, um, and then a little bit of a plan going forward on how to deal with uh, the beavers long term, hopefully.
So as you probably picked up on what's happening is every day or every few days I come out and I clear this drain and then at night the beaver come out and they block it back up again. On this day I'm out here with Paul and Tom, two of our awesome maintenance guys, um, and what I've figured out as you may have seen in one of the other pieces of the video, is um, since the beaver are nice enough to keep bringing me mud and sticks and rocks, I'm using that material to build a land bridge. And that has allowed us to be able to now walk out to the drain instead of having to have a wetsuit on to get out there. Um, and here, Tom and Paul and I are working on clearing it and figuring out what works best. Okay, so what can we as a college do about these beavers? We can trap and kill the beavers. We can clear the drain that they're blocking every day. Or we can outsmart the beavers. So how do we outsmart beavers? Beavers build their dams based on the sound of running water and being able to feel running water. So if we can let the water drain in a way that they can't feel or hear, then we'll outsmart the beavers and they won't be able to stop that flow. Okay, so how do we actually do this? Um, this is actually an, an engineering problem and a mechanical problem that others have already solved. The following is an image that I modified from the Beaver Institute's website. Um, and actually it's directly from a, a, a PDF from a company called Beaver Solutions LLC. This is a company that sells these kinds of materials and will help people with this kind of problem. Okay, so here's the image. Um, here's what we would basically need. On the left hand side you see a six foot by six foot mesh fence, like a cage. And inside of that cage is the inlet where the water's flowing into a large diameter pipe. That is a plastic 
corrugated p pipe that is about 15 inches around. It's a rather large pipe, and the reason it's so large is the larger the pipe, the less noise the water makes as it flows through the pipe. So again, beaver are stimulated to make a dam based on the sound of running water and by feeling water flowing. So the large diameter pipe keeps the beaver from being able to hear any water flowing. Secondly, the opening of that pipe is surrounded by that huge fence cage thing so that the beaver can't get close to the opening of that pipe and feel the water running into the pipe. So this has taken away both of those stimuli for the beaver and the, the water flowing out of our pond would be flowing through that place where the water goes into that pipe. Okay, so enough about the left hand side. Notice that the pipe is about 40 feet long and in this image that pipe leads to a beaver dam. For us obviously it's not going to lead to a beaver dam it's going to lead to our drain. So the end of that pipe would be dripping water to our drain. Here we would actually need another fence. We would need to fence our drain and the reason is looking at the drain there's an opening to the drain and then there's about a two meter drop down to the um, beginning of the culvert. That water is always going to make noise as it falls into the drain so the beaver are going to be stimulated to make a dam there. So we need to fence in that drain to per and, and the beaver will dam that fence, but the outlet to that pipe will be inside of that um, fence around the drain, so it'll be able to drain and not be blocked, um, even if the beaver are damming the, the fence that's around the drain. So that is basically what the beaver professionals and scientists recommend that we do in a situation like ours with a beaver problem like ours. I'd like to thank some folks that were involved in this project, um, the Glen Oaks maintenance crew. I can't say enough about these fine folks, Larry D, Larry E, Paul, Tom, Jordan, and Amanda. Um, they were supportive during the process. They helped out, and they're taking over clearing the drain now that a wetsuit's not required anymore. I'd also like to thank my fellow Glen Oaks science faculty members, Jerry and Jeff. Um, they were also supportive during this process and um, they did the legwork to find good information about um, how to solve this beaver problem long term. And of course, thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, comments, or critiques, please leave them down below. Glen Oaks Community College, transforming lives and advancing communities.